Hey, welcome back. Another day in the life of the Grimwards. So today's small little project, which I hope it's small and little. Um, so when we bought this tractor, I planned on using it as a business venture, as well as doing some stuff around the house and just, you know, whatever, whatever came along. So uh, I've been using it more and more as a business thing. So um, in the past, what we're gonna do today is work on chaining this thing down or, or moving to a new method of tying it down. We're gonna do a video maybe in the next couple weeks about straps and their weights and how to read them and what they say and what they mean um, and how to decipher that information. But today what I wanna do is, so now we have the dump trailer. Um, so now what I wanna do today is on the front here, I'm going to mount uh, just a shackle and it looks like this. D-ring shackle and this is the same thing you'll see on tractor, I mean on trailers, dump inside dump trailers, all the same kind of thing. So what I'm thinking is just well real quick in the past I've been using straps over the axle under the bucket or around the bucket and then come up because I have two of these in the front of my trailer flatbed trailer so what i would like to start doing because that just becomes a pain in the butt sometimes with the grapple and anything you have on the front just throws that off a little bit with the axle so this is all tied in with the frame right through the tractor so i don't see any reason why i can't so i'm just going to do a single point in the front and then i can run a chain kind of down on an angle to two points that i have on the trailer so I think that's gonna be easier for the front. It'll make easier for loading, unloading. And then in the back, uh, I'll show you what we have in the back. So in the back, depending on what implement I have on the back, um, I've been using this one point right here off the draw bar with this big shackle. Um, so the same thing, I think in the end, I'm just gonna run one chain through there because what was happening is with my land plane and using straps or a strap through the rear, they were getting chafed, they're getting caught. They're just, they're, they just take, you know, as they ride down the road, it wiggles a little. So now what I think I'm gonna do is switch to chains just to make it easier on myself. The straps are good, the straps will hold the weight. Um, but now we're just gonna to go to chain. So I'm gonna run one single chain through here, the same thing out to both sides of the trailer. So the other thing this is gonna work well with is the dump trailer also has in the corners four of these. So the same principle, I'll be able to run one chain in front and one chain in the rear, and then I can strap it down and I'll be good to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, I'm gonna start, I gotta take the battery out of the front. I'll open the front here and you can see I don't think anybody's ever done a video on this or this kind of, you know, strapping down your tractor. You know, don't get me wrong. Most people buy these tractors and they are for home use. They really don't go anywhere. But, you know, if you, if you, if you have friends, it's kind of like if you want friends, buy a trailer. If you want friends, buy a tractor. It's the same principle. So this thing, you know, it has the potential to go and I put it on the trailer and take it somewhere. And then, like I said, you know, doing some small side work business with it. So we'll get it up front and we'll let this thing go and uh, probably speed through some of the stuff. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk a little on the way.
All right, so I'm putting a little bit of red Loctite on here just in case. You know, it's one of those things like, not that it's going to you think it'll fall off, but you, you just want to make sure it's not going anywhere. I'll put a little bit, of, I got a lock washer on the back. You know, all you need is just a little bit. to go crazy some maintenance maintenance on your tractors this is a good time we, we got the shop back out we did a little bit of maintenance you know I'm looking at fuel I'm just looking for leaks all blew out everything but here's something I want to point out and I dealt with this a lot in the automotive world they don't make battery terminals the right size anymore and when I say the right size is I just tighten this thing up all the way till it was super tight and I just pulled it right off the post now the positive side, for whatever reason, they work. You can pick these up. It's just, it's a battery terminal spacer, any auto parts store. And um, I found that on now every, just about every time you put a battery in something, you're gonna need at least one of these for the negative. They are not the same size and whatever you do, that will not tighten down. You know, again, I had never, I had never turned the terminals, I just, visually inspected this every once in a while now that i've had to work on it i'm realizing that it was probably never making a really good connection and it had zero dielectric grease on it i always like to grease these just a little bit to have it there so all you do is that thing just slides over and then after that the problem you'll, you'll if you have any problems will be just trying to get just getting this thing back open a little bit. So I'm gonna grab some pliers and we'll try and open it up a little bit. So I guess in hindsight, this is good that I tried, tried to do one thing and now I'm finding more things, so is all good now we'll get it all knocked out and taken care of and shouldn't be a problem in the future like i said the only problem you have now is just really just trying to get it back on Probably because now you've really change that paper on there. There we go. And then what'll happen is it's got little little slices on the side. 
so they will open up. I mean, they will open up enough to slide on, and then when you tighten this, then they'll squeeze, they got enough room to squeeze back together. I know everybody out there is saying you should never bang on battery terminals, but. Hopefully when this thing squeezes down really tight, it's not going to come off. And there it is. So now it's tight on there. Okay, so through the power of video and a lot of struggling, we got this back on and everything's tight. It's got some grease on it. I got these little plastic things that I guess in case something drops on them, I'm not hundred percent sure what they do. Um, so again, if you learn anything from this is just to, you know, when you get a chance, if you're doing something, use that as an opportunity to, uh, to check everything out. Because again, so many people, you know, we buy these and we think, we think that everything's ready to go. And then in reality, they're not, you know? So take a few minutes and it's something I kind of not really learned, but you know, in the automotive working on cars, you always look at one thing and you end up fixing three others. And it's just, that's just how it works. So. Now we're just gonna tidy this up, put it all back together, and uh, we'll be done. Okay. So there it is. The uh, completed part of it. Um, so hopefully that'll help me out in the future and work on. So like I said, in other videos we'll. We'll work on chaining it down and going through some of that and some of the goods and bads and what you're supposed to maybe not supposed to do but uh there you go